More data keeps coming out showing us that TKI therapy can be safely discontinued in a select group of CML patients. It appears that in chronic phase CML patients who have achieved deep levels of molecular response, in most cases that means at least MR 4.0, and have maintained that response for a reasonably long duration of time, one year, two years, three years, that in that setting it's reasonable to consider an attempt at TKI discontinuation. We want to make sure that when we're doing this that we have patients who we know are reliable and will come back and continue to get their molecular testing done. They need to be treated by someone who has access to reliable PCR that's reported on the international scale. We want to make sure that whoever is attempting to discontinue the TKI with the patient, whichever physician is doing it, is aware of all of the data and aware of when most studies have restarted TKI therapy. But at this day and age, discontinuation of TKIs is becoming a very real possibility for a select group of patients, which I think is very exciting. Treatment-free remission is a very important topic in the treatment of chronic myeloleukemia in 2017. As you may now, NCCM for the first time really lay out the basis of when outside clinical trials we can discontinue patients that has been treated for TKI for a certain period of time. And in general, although these rules may change and we now that uh, the longer the better, the longer therapy the better, is considered that today if a patient has been checking a second, first or second generation TKI for more than three months and at least is been in a complete molecular response to at least achieving a 4.0 LOX reduction over PCR, is a patient that may be considered a candidate for discontinuation. However, I have to really say that, of course, there's other um, parameters that need to be considered. I think uh, important to really be consulted with a CML specialist, at least to make sure that all these conditions are really accomplished. We know that some patients may not really have a baseline PCR, which may be a problem, mainly in the patient who never really have a PCR detectable. We know there is very small percentage of patients, but that exists in the community who they have a negative PCR because it's not really the classical transcript, the one that we detect. And in those patients, it's maybe not safe to really discontinue because you are not going to be able to really follow the patient after discontinuation. So in general, uh, although this mm, situation may be a little complicated and very um, unusual, it's always important to really uh, consult at least to really have some kind of communication between the doctor, the local oncology, or even the patient to make sure that when someone decides to discontinue this drug can be done in a safe and effective manner. The Euroski trial is a large study done in Europe, I think it was 11 European countries that, that in, were involved in this clinical trial. They enrolled 821 patients and 750 of those patients were valuable for molecular relapse-free survival. So in this study, patients were required to have achieved an MR 4.0 and maintained that response for a minimum of one year prior to discontinuation of therapy. As we've seen with a number of other discontinuation trials, the majority of patients who lose their molecular response did so pretty early on. So at six months, it was around 60, 62% of patients who were still free of molecular relapse. And that number declined slowly after that, but by two years, it was 52% of patients who were still free of a molecular relapse. In this study, the definition of molecular relapse was loss of MMR. The, the comforting thing about this study, along with many of the other discontinuation trials, is that in the patients who did relapse, they were restarted on their prior TKI, and nearly everybody regained their prior level of molecular response, suggesting that there's not a lot of harm in attempting discontinuation of therapy as long as we're monitoring these patients closely. But this is by far the largest TKI discontinuation trial that's been done, and definitely supports the data from prior studies making, I think, everybody feel more comfortable with the concept and bringing it definitely more into the mainstream.